How did it pan out? Well, pretty much, in a nutshell, it didn't pan out. You know what I mean? Um, from the first day, like, what Ali's going through right now with the record only being, like, one record only being in Houston, stuff like that, I went through the same thing. It just didn't make sense, and I really have no patience. You know what I mean? I think that's my Achilles heel, no patience at all. And I'm not gonna say I gave up on it because I went out, I did shows, I supported it as much as I could, but I knew they weren't gonna put their foot behind the project. So I pretty much left them alone, had some choice words for them, and kept it moving so it didn't pan out at all. Whether it's their fault or my fault, it just didn't work out. The Ryko Penalty uh, Partnership is brand new. Um, we're learning, discovering things about one another. Um, for me, I'm at somewhat of a disadvantage not having a video because it, with the video, you sort of bring out the awareness of the, that you have a record out there and people with that awareness, you know, the, the retailers will definitely pick up and, and purchase the record. So um, I think that is our handicap, but, um, and with that, the, the, the records are not in certain stores in certain areas and we are limited to certain targeting certain regions. Um, I think the, the beautiful thing about my partnership with, with Penalty and Ryko is that they understand that this was going to be the process and they're willing to stand behind the record and with patience and, and, and hard work and until the word is spread, you know, until we get the, the buys from the retailers that we're looking for. So it's brand new, you know, I think, <laughs> I hope to still have this, this, this chip of attitude towards the relationship, you know, six months from now. And I think I will because they are completely behind in supporting the record. For me, it's just strictly, are they going to support it? Do I have to worry about whether they're gonna support it or not? That's my biggest worry. And that's really it for me. You know what I mean? Because the one thing I hate is doing music, a batch of songs, and they go wasted mm -hmm. because they didn't want to support it. You know what I'm saying? That's my biggest worry. And I think the only thing I really want to or need to worry about is being an artist. You know what I mean? And sometimes you don't have that luxury because you have to be the a and You have to be a CEO. You have to be the gopher. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So support is my biggest thing. I think because the music industry has taken such a financial hit and has changed so much that um, the only way to really advance is if you take your career completely and fully into your own hands by, by hiring independent publicists or independent marketing teams. Um, the problem with that is, especially if you're a brand new artist, is that one, you may not even be surrounded by people to, to, to even guide you in that direction, and two, have the financial, you know, capability to even get you there but in order to really have a, a successful project there are a couple of things you need to have lined up that th those are definitely you know favorable um, steps to take the other thing is to go out there and and see the people people may not know who you are especially if you're a new artist or even if you aren't they may not know that you have a record out I'm not certainly not a new artist and people don't know I have a record out, but I'm going out there to, you know, service people to, you know, perform. Performing is one of the biggest things you can do outside of, of uh, having a video and outside of hiring an independent uh, marketing team, street team, publicist. If you go out there and see the people, shake the people, feel the people and let them know, you know, like, let them feel your music, that's the best piece of thing, anything that you can do in, in, in launching your career, your project, and certainly, again, having, you know, taking a complete uh, you know, independent step without relying on the, the record label to do this for you and do that for you and do this for you. You'll be in a better position. One of the things that our Trial Call Quest did, we didn't rely heavily on uh, Jive to do certain things. We had to go out there and do what is called grassroots. Um, and it was through that that we were able to get into certain areas and, and see and merge up with different genres of music that allowed for our success. And, I don't, and if you don't have the, the proper guidance and people to tell you that, then it's going to be a, a, a difficult struggle. Um, 
I, I think sometimes we rely too heavily on the record companies having to do this for us. And you have to look at your situation as it's your situation. And no one is going to do anything for you. You have to do it for yourself. That's, the, that's really the best way you know, to think when you're moving forward. Is you put the work in for yourself, because when you do, you're going to see the results. And then they're going to come back and say, oh yeah, look what we did. And you can remind them, nah, look what we did. And moving forward, this is how we want to negotiate this deal. What I mean by grassroots is, as, as I said before, just going out, finding a booking agent, or if you don't have a booking agent, there's, there's several resources out there. Um, it's like a, um, the music atlas that has um, venues and, and rock college radio stations and stuff like that. You, you book a club, you go out there, um, you promote it, get yourself some flyers, pass out the flyers, go to other clubs, you know, things are happening. Have your people pass out flyers so that people can see, oh, you know, they may not know who you are, but if you just have your people out there doing it, and then by you yourself performing, you know, and then contacting those little college radio stations, that's important. Um, because what you're doing is establishing a foundation. Um, you're, you're, you're planting the seeds, so to say. And, and just do that throughout across the country. Get in, get in a, if it's going to be a SUV, 16 passenger van, or even a little mini. You know, you, you and your partner or whatever, and go out there and work. Do the road work. Perform, 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 and then perform some more, perform some more, perform some more, until people become familiar with who you are. And then once that happens, then other things will come into place. Then, you know, you'll start to see some, some, some spins on a commercial radio. And then, you know, if you, if you shoot a video from that point, then all these other things, it's like a domino effect take, take place. And the other beautiful thing about doing, doing things from a grassroots level is that you're not going to be here today, gone tomorrow. That's how you establish a long-term career when you move that way. So it's important that, that that was what we did and that's the training that I know of. And if you look back to all, all the, the musical greats through Motown and so on and so forth, that's what they did.